Okay. So let us begin who we have. So today's agenda is to talk about billing. So So we're going to talk about billing process. So that is our agenda for today. And uh, thank you everyone for joining. And uh, I appreciate that. So billing process. Now billing is the last step. So when we talk about the entire sales cycle, billing is the last step. There is nothing after billing. So this is the last topic last step so in our class so far we did inquiry we did quotation we did sales order we did a contract <coughs> we did a scheduling agreement <coughs> we did a delivery process we did a transfer order we did a good issue and then <coughs> We did billing. So billing is the last step. Okay. So we are doing the billing process. So billing basically means when we invoice the customer. Okay. So invoicing to a customer is basically talks about invoicing customer to making sure that we can invoice the customer. So billing is the final stage in the sales process. Billing document is usually or always created with reference to a preceding document. Now, what is the meaning of that is being created with reference to preceding document? Because when you're creating a billing document, billing document, because why will you do the billing, right? So either there is an order, so because there is an order, um, you would be doing some kind of a, So billing document can be created with reference to delivery or with reference to an order. So those are the two so we can do billing document. Now so billing is basically final step where we have to when we, we got an order. And then when we deliver the product to the customer and after delivering the product to the customer, we have to invoice the customer. So if we see that here, billing can be done with reference to another billing document. Billing can be done with reference to delivery. So I create an order, after order we get delivery and after delivery we create invoice. And after delivery, we can also create sales order. We can do delivery with reference to sales order. When, it, when we create a delivery related, it's widely used. See that delivery related billing is widely used. So in more than likely case, you're going to create billing after delivery, most cases, whatever that most means. You get an order, after order you deliver product, and once you deliver the product, then you invoice to the customer okay so that is what this basically means okay so after delivery we will be invoicing okay so that is why these two things are connected with each other 
Now the next thing is. The next thing is another thing which is very important. The billing is FI and SD integration. So FI and SD integration. is coming from the billing document. So billing document is an FI and SD integration. And if you see here, there's a subsequent document created automatically. So subsequent documents get created automatically. Subsequent document basically means document related to document related to accounting. So one of the thing which is very important in billing, because billing is important, because at the end of the day, you, you are, your company is able to bill the customer. That is the purpose of the company, because what company want, company want to invoice, yeah? company want revenues. Now, if company want revenue, then how they get revenue? They get revenue by invoicing. So from that perspective, invoicing is very important. And, uh, and that is the reason that you will be doing billing. Okay. Now this document we're talking about is it integration with the finance. So another thing important here is now, when we get a billing document in SAP, there could be different kind of billing document. Invoice. You can do credit memo. You can do debit memo. Some cases you can also do performa invoice. Performa invoice basically means uh, you want to create an invoice and uh, you want to create a performa invoice. Performa invoice basically means is a provisional invoice. It's not actually this. You can also do cancellation or document. And then we have accounting document. Accounting document is the integration of SD and FI. Now let us do an end-to-end -end cycle. So let's do end-to-end -end sales cycle this integration of billing and account. So let's do that cycle. Okay. So okay. how do we do that? So I'm going to create a customer. You can use existing customer also. We can create a sales order. Create a delivery document. Then we're going to do picking. Then we're going to do post good issue. Now this post good issue is one example of FI CO integration. Then another one is creating billing document. And then verifying accounting document. And this is another 
FICO and SD integration. Make a note of all these steps, please. And then we do the talk. Okay. Make a note of all these steps. If you go to Customer, this is transaction code X01. This is a transaction code VA01. This is the transaction code delivery VA01N. Verify accounting document. This is the transaction code. We have zero one n. We have done this. This is the exercise which we did in the beginning. In fact, this was our first exercise when we started the course. So now we get a customer. So we go to XG01. We can use existing customer also. So we select our account group. Sold to party, company code 1000, 1000, and 00. zero. So this is uh, any standard customer. We don't need this customer actually. I'm just creating for the sake of it. We can use any of our existing customer as well. Company code data, we get a customer, enter the reconciliation account, payment term, sales series data, in quota, So we have a customer created. I make a note of my customer. Now I want to create a sales order. 
Sales order is a regular sales order which we have done many, many times. Or we enter the customer number. We enter our material, enter the quantity. Okay. So we double, uh, we enter some price here. So we can enter the price. Here zero zero. Some price less than hundred dollar whatever. And we could add it, check our incompletion log. We got a message in the bottom, document is complete, and we save it. Okay? So we save our document. Okay. Sales order. This is the same sales order which you have created many, many times. And uh, I make a note of the sales order. After sales order, we create a delivery. The delivery is the same transaction code. VL01N which you create many, many times. When I say V, that basically means I. You, I don't know, because most of you don't send any homework to me, which is disappointing. Um, so we put uh, some do, so thank you. And we create a delivery. Okay. No schedule and okay date. Okay, change the date. Hit enter. Okay. So now here, this is the same delivery we have done many, many times. In this, these steps are not anywhere any different. And then we picked quantity, we enter save, and uh, then we have this post condition. So we issue the material. Okay. Oh, posting. Okay, because today is a month end. Today is the beginning of the month, so you have to close the posting period. Okay. So we go back. We see the delivery. We save the delivery. We got a message. <clears throat> we make a, we make a note of this and. We just said delivery document. So we make a note of it. And after that, we do postcode issue and we hit it. Okay. 
Now there is no problem. Now, why that message came? So that message was came because today is called posting period closer. Today is August 1st, right? So first day of the month. So system SAP is telling us to close July before you can make entry in August in finance. It's a finance requirement. Remember, we do FI and SD integration. And because we're doing FI and SD integration at the time of post good issue, that is why that message comes. Because today is August 1st. Now, if you do after closing the period, you will not get this message. But once you get this message, till you close the period, system says you're doing uh, posting in August, good, but close July. And when we close July, then we can do entry in a August. So now that error message goes, but that is the purpose of that message. Now these posting period closing and all that is done by the finance people. It's not normally done by uh, SD or any other logistic people. It's not their responsibility. Now, the next step which I want to do is to create a billing document. So I want to do, so I want to go back. I want to go back. I want to go back and I want to create a billing document. Now, where is the billing document? So there's logistic. You go to sales and distribution. We go to billing. And uh, here in the billing, we have a VF01. Okay. So this is the VF01. So we go back to VF01. We put our delivery documents. So this is an example where we are creating invoicing with reference to delivery. So this is an example of creating reference document for this invoicing is delivery. Document to be processed, and this is the document. And we say hit enter. And then we say hit save. Okay. See the message. Okay. So document nine zero zero three seven eight seven four has been saved. Now what happens? So we did all this cycle. I want to go to VA03. And in the VA03, I want to verify the document flow. I want to see what really happens. We go to VA03. Sales order is my document. Now here, we have a accounting document. You see that accounting document, 14002. That is what we see here, accounting document. This accounting document is the integration of SD and FI. So when we did a billing document, system created accounting document. That is what is going on. That is what is system is doing for us. Creating accounting document. And that is what we see here, accounting document. Now, if you go to good issue, so there's the SD and FI integration happening twice. So this is one is F FI and SD integration. We saw that entry before, we're gonna see it again. And this is second FI and SD integration. This is the second place where the FI and SD integration takes place. So FI and SD integration happens twice. Once at the time of post good issue and second at the time of creating invoicing document or billing document. So when you create a customer billing, so this is customer billing, it create accounting document. So it happens twice. So now we go here first. I want to see what happened here. Okay. 
So we want to see what happened here. So we select that good issue. Then we go to accounting, display accounting document. Now this is the material document. In this material document, we are posting it. On this date, this material slip by this user, 10 pieces, this material in this plant, in this store location, minus. Minus means good issued. And then behind the scene, there is a counting document here. So we click on the counting document. And here, we have accounting document. Now, if I go to this accounting document, what do we see? We click on this accounting document, and then we see what we see in this accounting document. Okay, let us check that. It's opening. Okay. So here we have a, this is my accounting document. Now this accounting document, my inventory account seven nine two zero zero has been credited means my finished good inventory is reduced and my cost of goods sold eight nine three zero one five this account has been debited. So credit for this good inventory and debit cost of goods sold. Okay. Now what does this basically mean and how come this came? That is what we are trying to understand. How come this came? From where this came? In order to verify there is a transaction code OBYC. Make a note of this is the transaction code which is used for inventory account determination OBYC. I want to do this exercise. I want to go to OBYC. Okay. So if I go to OBYC, I open another session. So I open another session. I go to OBYC. This is the configuration of uh, Okay. 
Now here we have a different transaction key. And if you see here, there is a BSX. BSX is the transaction key for inventory posting. So make a note of here. So BX is, is transaction key. Make a note of all this for inventory posting. Make a note of it. So BSX is the transaction key for inventory posting. So this is inventory posting. There are many different inventory posting here. So, so we go to Inventory posting, BSX. Then the system asks you for chart of account. Then we need to enter chart of account. So what is my chart of account? So in a standard SAP, chart of account is INT. Enter chart of account. And there is a valuation class. So there is a valuation class. Remember, in the accounting view, I enter this valuation class, valuation class all the time. Right? Many times we create a material, we enter the valuation class. And for finished good, we enter 7920. And that account is, so next parameter is valuation class. 79. And here we have COA, that is my chart of account. So here we have, for this chart of account, for this transaction key, if my material valuation class is 7920, this is the account posting, it will happen 79200. That is what we have it here, 79200. That is how system determine invite. Now, if you see here, there are different variation class, 3000. 3000 is for raw material. 7,020 is for finished good. 700 is for semi-finished. <coughs> and then many more. Now, what is the meaning of these valuation classes are because let us say you have a $10 million inventory. If you have a $10 million inventory, you would like to verify out of that $10 million, how much is your finished good? How much is your raw material? How much is your semi-finished? So you can categorize each of these inventory in different buckets. So I have a $10 million inventory. After $10 million, $5 million is finished. Three million is raw material, two million is uh, trading goods. So that is how we see all these different accounting. And that is how we have this account document here called 79200. Okay. And uh, apart from that, if you go here, the configuration, that is how the account determination for uh, happens. And then there are different other entries also. So we see that here uh, for conception entry, see that for freight and you know, for all the different kind of uh, um, account determination happen in the materials management. Now this is an example of uh, okay. So this is an example 
of having different uh, account determination based upon your raw material inventory. If you go to GBB, this is a cost center. And here we can have a different uh, consumption account which you can post based upon you know where the inventory is going. So these are the different consumption account. And you see this is my valuation class consuming and where this inventory goes out. So if you see that here, 893015. So you have different account. Okay. So similarly, you can have a different account postings, which you can maintain here for different consumption, for different account. That is what this is coming. Okay. And there could be different kind of conjunctions, so that's why we have all these different conjunction accounts. If you have a, let's say freight, you're paying the freight, you can have a freight account, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is what um, this integration happens. This is the first integration. This integration of inventory transaction code is OB by C. Now, we go to second integration. Now, this is the second integration. This is happening at the time of creating custom invoicing. So, what is this uh, document? So, now here, in accounting document, what we saw, credit, inventory, and uh, debit. cost of goods sold. Okay. So there's a credit and there is a debt. These are the entry. Now I want to check what is going on here. So here also should be a debit entry and should be a credit. So what is debit and what is credit? So we go back. We go back. We go back. Now here we have this accounting document. I want to see this accounting document. What's going on in this one? Now, in this accounting document, first and foremost, my customer, which we created 101516, this customer has been debited for 1100. So, what is my account entry here? So, debit my customer master record. So my custom master record has been debited because we that customer owe the money to us. The second thing which we have here is my revenue account. So this is my revenue account. So revenue has been credited. So credit revenue because at the end of the day we wanted to check the revenue. And there is another credit. Actually, there are two credits. Another credit is freight. So credit your revenue and also credit your freight account. That is what we see here. So this was uh, 
in this example for 1100 revenue is for 1000 and the customer going to pay freight of $100 because there's a freight amount as well so that $1000 1100 become 1000 plus 100 so 1000 plus 100 become 1100 so that is how this is taking place So that is what happens. Now the question is, how this account determination happens? So we saw that how does this account determination happen? Now the question is, how does this account determination happen? This account. That you are trying to understand. So how come? this account determination will happen. Okay. So this is another Okay, so how come this is happening? So we saw this. This is transaction code O B Y C, and we see that here there is another accounting document. This is another integration of HD with the finance. But how come these accounts got determined? So obviously we know this is the customer so customer got updated so that makes sense because customer has to be updated right so customer got uh, debited because there is a customer in this invoice the question is how does revenue account come this 8000 coming from where this 80900 coming from where that we are trying to understand so from where we got this account this is the customer number this is my revenue account 8000 is my revenue account. 80900 is my freight account. How come and from where we got it? Okay. Now, before I go into the configuration, I want to go to invoice. So, this is invoice. This is 1100. Then I go to environment. And here we have a revenue account. So this is where we have revenue account determination. Okay. I go there. Because this is how you can verify. Now here, account determination also works on the basis of condition technique. Remember we talk about the condition technique in the pricing, where we configure our pricing procedure, condition type, excel sequence, condition table, we create condition record. Revenue account determination is another example of condition technique. Another example how condition technique works. How condition technique works. 
So here we have something called Kofi 00. Then we have a condition type PR00. And then we have a condition type KF00. Right? Okay. PR00 is my price in the price list, in the pricing procedure. KF00 is my freight. What is Kofi? What is this Kofi? Kofi 10, 20, 30, 40. Same thing. We did in pricing. If you come here, X is not carried out. These two fields are missing. 20, these two fields are missing out because this field is missing. Here, this field is missing. But in the 40, this access sequence was successful. So GL account 800000 was determined from account determination type. Chart of account was INT, sales organization was 1000, and account key is ERL. Now, what is the meaning of all this? First and foremost, we need to go back to the pricing procedure. So we go back. We go back. We double click on the line item. Then we go to conditions. And here, we have a condition type PR00, which is for $1,000. KF00 for the freight amount, which is $100. So that is why 1,000 and 100 become 1100 so 1000 is for price and 100 is for the friction then i go to analysis in the analysis i have a pricing procedure rva this is the pricing procedure same pricing procedure which you saw now in this pricing procedure we have a pr00 that is my list price. And uh, we have a KF00, which is my freight. freight. And if you see that, freight condition record has been formed. That is why we have $100. So two conditions have been formed, one for price, one for freight. This is the pricing procedure. So what is the pricing procedure? RBA00. This same pricing procedure we saw in sales order, same pricing procedure, whatever we have sales order comes to invoicing. So far, so good. Now, again, I want to go back to my um, environment, account determination. Go back. Environment, account determination. Revenue account. And here we have Kofi. We don't know what is this Kofi. We don't know Kofi 00. We don't know what is this Kofi. And now system is saying that uh, this procedure Kofi, 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 in that there is a PR00. In that we have a condition type Kofi. In that you have a GL account 8000. In that you have a chart of account INT. Sales organization 1000. And account key ERL. We don't know what is ERL. INT is chart of account we know. Sales organization is thousands. Account key ERL. So first and foremost, I go to uh, 
pricing to Caesar. We have gone there before. So we go to pricing procedure, SPRO, same pricing procedure configuration we saw many, many times. We are going again. We have a sales and distribution. Basic function. We go to pricing. And here we have a pricing control. We have a defined and assigned pricing procedure. And I want to go to my pricing procedure RBA01. And maintain pricing procedure, we double click on it. And then here we have RVAA01, RVAA01. This is the same pricing procedure. Now, if you see here, this PR00 is linked to the account key ERL. So very first thing is you verify. So now we are talking about how the revenue, revenue, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> account determination happens. Okay. So in the, So the revenue account determination happens. In the revenue account determination, first we saw price condition type, PR00 is linked to account key, ERL. Second, if I go back uh, in the bottom to the freight, so we are going to bottom. And here we have a KF00, and that is linked to a county ER. So that is the first thing. So here we have condition type. KF00 is linked to account key ERF. Okay. Okay, so that is the first thing we see saw. Now, if you go back here, there's the ER and the account is 0900 font. So we see that the PR00 is linked to that uh, ERL we saw in pricing procedure and KF00 is linked to account key error. Those two things we saw, we are good, we are so far so good. Now, the question is how the account get determined. That part we have to see. But before I do that, 
I have a good news. What is the good news? So we're going to take a 10 minute break and we'll continue after 10 minutes. So 10 minute break. Take all legally permitted drugs. And let us continue. So now we can understand how the revenue account determination happens. We can understand what is this co fee zero zero is and how does this co fee zero zero helps and works with us. So that is what we will be trying to understand. Okay. So now So we go to configuration. So we go to configuration. And uh, we have here our revenue account determination process. So here we have account assignment and then we have revenue account determination. Okay. Now this is another example of condition technique. Okay. So first and foremost, We will check, define and assign account determination procedure. So we, we click on it. <clears throat> and here we have a define account procedure and assign account determination procedure. And if I go to define account determination procedure, then here we have account determination procedure COP00. And we go to control data. So procedure COP00 is linked to and then we can say procedure COP00 is linked to condition type COP. That is what you see here, COFI00 linked to condition type COFI. So here we have a condition type COFI. Now another thing which you come out of here, come out of here. The another thing which you see here is assign account determination procedure. So if you go back here, account assignment procedure. If I double click on it, and if I go to my billing document type F2, and then if you see here, it's F2 is linked to the procedure COFI00. And that is why here we have COFI00.
and that is what we see here. Now, if I go back, go back, and here we have a defined access sequence and account determination type. So we saw the condition type Kofi. So this extra sequence also called Kofi. Same condition technique. We go to Kofi, we go to XSS, and then here we have a 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And that is what you see here. 10, what do we see here? Customer sales organization, sales customer group, account seven group, account key. And we see 10, 20, 30. That is what we see at 10, 20, 30, 40. Because that access sequence is assigned to this. And this is access sequence coffee. And this is access sequence coffee. Go back, go back. Go back. And then we have a defined account determination type. And here we have a condition type Kofi, which is assigned to access sequence Kofi. Go back. Okay. And that is what we see here. Now, if you see here, there are different account keys. And if you go to sign GL account, if you click on it, And that is what you see as table one, table two, table three, table four. Here, we see table four, because that is the one who key has been found. So we go to table four. You have, you have these key combinations in which you can maintain your general ledger. So we see here, so there are all these different entries. So we have a chart of account INT. Sales organ 1000 and account key ER. So if I go back here, so chart of account INT, so we have to scroll down, so we scroll down. So we scroll down. Yeah, okay. So this is where we have So we have chart of account, INT, sales organization, 1000, and assigned to account, 8000. Now, where is uh, my account key? I also want an account key. So, yeah, this one, account key. So here, yeah, this is better. So here we have application B, condition type Kofi, chart of account INT, sales organization 1000, account key ER. See this entry. And that is why the account 800 has been found. Because chart of account INT, chart of account INT, sales organization 1000, account key ERN, and we have GL account 800.
சில கவுண்டரிஸ் இருந்து எடுத்துடும் so that is how we can maintain zero count okay that is what we see 8 zero 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 eight zero zero same thing for the freight if you go here in freight a pump key is erf we go to analysis button so here this is account key erl and we should have somewhere erf also yeah so this is erf here so erf so if my chart of account is int if my sales of 1000 if my account key is erf then my gl account it 80900 that is what we see here 8090000 okay okay so that is how account determination process works so this was an important configuration of fi and sd integration and we verified okay now we can do uh, two kind of uh, invoices one is a uh, delivery related billing this is what we did where we can create a sales order from the sales order we can create delivery and with the delivery we can create a invoice so you can create an invoice with reference to say uh, delivery that's what we did in last exercise then we also can do invoice directly from the sales order there could be many example for example you can have a credit memo we might have debit memo so we might have a different uh, documents so you can do delivery with reference to sales order or with reference to delivery now there are two ways to create a invoicing either we can do one invoice at a time which is what we did the last time or we can also create billing due list now what is a billing due list So if you go back, if you go back, go back. And here we have a processing billing till list. So we, how do we do the process billing due list? So I want to do another exercise. So I want to do create cash sales order document type CS. So we want to create. This is the cases we created before. Verify delivery. And uh, process invoicing. Okay. So that is what we want to do. Give me one recording, please. Thirty seconds.
So processing invoice. So now let's do that. Let me close this window. So I create a sales order, VA01. And here we have a CS, cash sales. And remember, we did a cash sales before. We select our customer. We enter the material. We enter the quantity. Then we double click on it. We go to conditions. Here zero zero. Add it in completion log. And then we save it. See the message in the bottom. Sales order has been created. Delivery 800 has been created. Because it's a cash sales, is created. Delivery automatically. So we make a note of it. This is our sales order. And then if you go back to the delivery, Then this is my delivery document. And I make a note of my delivery. Okay. Now, if in the delivery, if I want to do picking and post good issue, it's the same process. So if I want to do post goods issue, we can do both the same day. So we can do picking and we can do post creation. This part is safe. So cashier's delivery has been checked. Now, after creating this, I want to go to billing. Okay. I want to go to billing. So if I go to billing here, we have 01. Now, if you see here, it appears the sales order number here. Yeah? It doesn't bring delivery. So this is an example of a... This is an example of a creating billing with the reference to sales order. So this is an example of it when you're trading a billing with reference to sales order. Okay. If I go back here, and we can create and we can save the same thing. So remember we're talking about here in the last trading a invoice with reference to sales order. So this is the flow. So when we do a cash sales, this is an example of creating a billing with reference to sales order. Now there is something also called billing due dates. Now what is the billing due dates? So I don't want to save this here. So I exit out from here. So I don't want to create uh, this invoicing. I just want to see. And then I want to create a process billing due list. So I want to go to billing due list. Now here you have a choice. You want to do order related billing. You want to deliver related billing. You want to select uh, which customer you want, which sales organization you want. And if you hit execute, you will you should get a lot of documents. Okay. You get all these different documents. It means all these different documents are supposed to be built but has not been built. That's why it's called billing due list. 
So that is why we have here something called billing due list. Because billing due list gives you a list of all items, all orders, all deliveries, which are supposed to be built, but they have not been built yet. So this is the whole list we got. If you want uh, only deliveries, and if I put, let's say, some more uh, sales organization, 1000, distance channel 10, and division 00, and I only want deliveries, you can only select deliveries. So these are only deliveries. So you get a less, lesser number. And if you say, no, I just want, uh, I don't want delivery, I only want orders, which is supposed to be built. So we get orders. These are all different transactions, which you get caught, which has not been built. Quite a few of them. Now I put, uh, because there are quite a few number, And then I put here my customer number. So I select my customer, which I created today, 101516. So I say, just give me for this customer, 101. That is the purpose of the process in building your list because you can get the document by a different document. And for this, I don't have any document at all. Order, delivery, and we can put a billing date out because I want to get a broader degree. Now, for this, I have one document. So in this sales organization, on this billing date, for this customer, I have this document, 16363. 16363. 16363. So system telling me that uh, we have uh, all these different orders which has been created um, with reference to that. Okay. And I select here and I want to say individual billing and we set see the message in the bottom billing document has been saved so we created a billing document now this billing document we created with reference to billing due list if I go to VA03 if I go to document flow, so that is the set. So the cash sales completed. This is the delivery completed, picking completed, post good issue completed. Now this is invoice number done on this date. Accounting document done. This is the whole. Now what we did here, so we created process billing. So this was an example of creating billing with reference to sales order. And we also created billing using billing due list. So using billing due list, which is transaction code, we have zero for. So that is the two things we did in this. So we created billing with the pencil sales order. And the second thing which we did was we created a billing due list. And we created a billing using billing due list. So two important things which we did. Okay. Now, when we say billing, you can do uh, <clears throat> same thing we talk in delivery also. You can do individual billing, one delivery, one invoice, one delivery, one invoice. 
we can do collective billing which basically means delivery one delivery two delivery three you can have a multiple deliveries going to one invoice you can do a split also so where you can have a one delivery document <coughs> getting split into more than one invoice document so you can do one to one many to one one to many so all the three situations we saw in delivery also same you can do here as well billing is split so you can billing is split basically means as the name suggests how the invoice would be is split so if you have a one order and if in one order if we have different bill to party and if you have a different bill to party then you can do invoice split or billing document is split collect basic basically means if you have a multiple orders and if those orders are going to same customer same bill to party you can combine them that is called collective billing this is the menu part we have 01 we have used it today this is the one we have used multiple time we have used before also and this is the menu part and this is transaction code billing create and this is the document this is the menu part we use and this is the transaction code we have used today also then now uh, you put your uh, delivery document and hit enter and then hit save you know there is the same uh, exercise which we did today so these are the steps and after you hit enter and then you can save it okay so that is how you can save your billing document this is what we did in exercise today already and then in the last you get a message in the bottom the billing document has been saved okay. so you get a message and then system created billing document okay and we saw that today itself and then you can also display document we saw that as well so here uh, there is a create change display so if you go back here there are multiple transaction code so we have 01 for create we have 02 for change we have 02 for display um cancel process so there are different transaction code if you want to go to change mode you can change it but there are only very few things once you create a billing document not many things are available to change so you see most of the even even though it is in change mode but it still you cannot change much of it because once the document is created you cannot change it so most of the change is actually not allowed but you have a create change display we have 01 for create we have 02 change we have 03 display and that is what we have create change display and then we have here displaying a billing document you can see the billing document like we are seeing there's a display billing document you can change the billing document you can see there is header information there is line item information so all that information you can see in in sap we saw this also we can go to the docking flow 
And we saw that in document flow system gives you an accounting document. We also looked into how the accounting document looked like in the accounting document, your customer is getting updated. So different GL accounts get updated automatically and uh, we can check all those documents automatically. Building due list is VF04. So this is VF04 also we did. That was our last exercise where we did a billing due list, right? So we can do billing due list, VF04, right? That is the one which we have entered. Then we have a, so that is the VF04, that is the menu part for VF04. And we can process billing document, VF04. And this is the screen we saw that we have a selection criteria, we can put uh, different uh, parameters, date, sales organized, distribution channel, customer, vendor, date, whether we want order related, delivery related, what kind of a transaction we want. So this is the screenshot we saw, and this is the VF04, we did this exercise. <clears throat> we saw this also, that when we put uh, VF04, and then we get uh, multiple invoices. So many, many different uh, type of invoices comes to us and uh, we can basically select the one we want. We can select one document, we can select multiple documents. So in case of VF04, all the documents, all the invoices which are relevant, all those invoices come to us, okay? So that is what it happens. And we have process of billing due list. That exercise also we did, so where we can select multiple documents, and then we can process all those different documents as well. Okay. So if I log in to the SAP, So here, if you go to accounting document, I'm sorry, logistic, if you go to sales and distribution, if you go to billing, billing document, and here we have all these different billing documents which we can review. So for example, if you go to billing document, this was our billing document. or this was our order, so we can check from order. So if you go to VA03, go to the document flow, this is my invoice, and this is the display of the invoice. This is the cashier's invoice which you did at the last. Okay. That is what we see here. Okay. If there is any log, you can check log also. If there is any error, so here there is a log. Log basically means if there is any problem, if there is an issue, if the invoice document has not been created correctly, if there is any problem, then you can go to log and using the log, you can actually check that if there is any problem. Okay, so that is where the log come into the picture. You can check all the different kind of log. That's the big to list log. There is a perform invoice also. Perform invoice is generated before shipment is made. Perform invoice is a provisional invoice. So many times what happens is um, before you do an actual invoice, you can actually do a pro forma invoice. Okay. Uh, so that is where the perform invoice come into the uh, picture. So in SAP, you have a perform invoice. So 
So if you go back here, um, and if I go back, if I go back, and the performing voice is a billing document type. So what is that billing document type? So if I create button here, and if you go to the document type, they are different billing document type. And this is the perform invoice. There are two, one is for order, one for delivery. So you can do perform invoice with reference to sales order, and you can do perform invoice with reference to delivery. So you have a both choices. So that is what you see here. So perform invoice. So when you're getting perform invoice, so there's a perform invoice for order and there's a perform invoice for delivery. So we have here two choices, perform invoice for um, order, perform invoice for delivery. F5, if you do perform invoice, it depends to sales order. And there's a perform invoice, if you do perform invoice, it depends to delivery document. So you have a both choices. That is what we see here. So now you can create a perform invoice with reference to sales document if you want to. You can create a perform invoice with reference to delivery document if you want to. So both choices are there. You can print a billing document as well. Now, how do you print? So if you go back, so if you see the any billing document, and here we have it. And uh, if you see here, there's issue output too. And uh, for that, is, there has to be output determination. And using output determination, you can basically print. And you can print different kind of uh, documents if you go to header and there's output and you can define different kind of output if you want to print it the same thing we talked before also so if you go back uh, you know rd00 so where is rd00 yeah this is invoice rd00 and uh, if you want to print it you can print, you can define your communication device basically means which printer you want to print. So you can do, put in a printer, output device basically means you have any printer, how many messages, how many copy you want, you want to print immediately. So on this printer, it will print. Okay, and you can save it. So if we go back, you can check it again. So here, now you see this output. You see there is a print. There is a print preview. And uh, you can have different options. So this is the print preview. So this is how, if it is print, this is how this layout going to look like. Now this is a standard ICP layout. If you want to change this layout, then you can change this layout. So this layout is changeable. Okay. So this layout is changeable. So that is a print preview. And then we'll be back. And that is what you see here. Print, print. Billing document type. So there are different billing document type. F1, F2, for credit memo, for debit memo, for cancellation, for performa. Now, where are these documents? So if you go back here, if I close it, 
And if I come back, there are different document types. So if you see the billing document type, so first and foremost, the, this F2 is a standard ICP billing document type. F5, F8 is the performing words. If you see the credit memo, there is a Z2, L2, so that is the credit memo. So if you go to credit memo, if you type, so this is the credit memo. If you go here, L2, that is debit memo. So if you go here, select L2, that is debit memo. So similarly, you can have a different billing document type. So let us say, I want to, um, so we created sales order. And uh, let us say, I want to create credit memo. Okay. So I want, how do I create a credit memo? So what do we do? So first and foremost, we create credit memo request. This is the document as CR, VA01. And then we create credit memo. This is example of a sales order related invoice because here there is no delivery document transaction code we have zero one and uh, if you see the document type of current memo is z2 z2 then uh, we verify doc that is the exercise I want to do. Okay. Just give me one second. Is there somebody calling me? Just one second, please. Okay, I'm back now. So, so we create a so we create credit member. Yeah. So come back from here. And uh, we go to sales order, VA01. And I put a document type CR. CR is for current memo. Thousand and zero zero. I can take my uh, customer we created today. Hit enter. Enter the material. Enter the quantity. Okay, then uh, I go here. There's a billing block. I can take this billing block off. I go to edit, in completion log, enter the order region. So system telling me why you're giving credit. So we're giving credit because material was damaged in the club, in the, in the transit. So one piece was damaged, so we are giving, and see the message, the bottom document is complete, and then we save it.
Okay, so see the message in the bottom. Credit member request A0063030 has been sent. I make a note of it. So this is credit memo. And now I want to go to create a credit memo VF01. So I exit out from here. I go to VF01. Document hit enter. And I get my net amount. And see the document as Z2. Z2. And then we set it. So we created a credit number. Let me see the document flow now. So this is the document flow. So this is the credit member request completed. Credit memo done. Accounting document done. If I go to credit memo, if I check the document, document as G G2. If I see accounting document, now if you see accounting document, my entry should be reversed. So now here, my standard order, my customer has been credited. Because I give a credit for this customer for $10. I want to do one more exercise and then we are done. So I want to do another exercise that is called debit memo. So we did credit memo and we want to debit memo. Okay, so that is the debit number. So this is the debit number, L2. So that is the exercise you wanna do for the debit memo process. So we created today, customer invoice. We created today, delivery related invoice. We created sales order related invoice. We created uh, billing document using process with a collective processing, billing process due list. We checked the accounting determination. We saw the credit memo and the determination of account. And the last thing which you're doing is debit memo. So this is credit memo and this is debit memo. Document type for debit memo is DR. So this is a process flow diagram. Please make a note of all these steps. Make a note of these steps. Okay. 
So make a note of that. Now let's do this exercise and the last exercise. So we cut it out. We go to sales order. Document type DR. I put my customer. Now see here, debit memo request. I take my billing block off. Enter my material. Enter my quantity. Whatever quantity. Why I'm giving a debit? There was a price discrepancy. I overcharged my customer. So there was some price discrepancy. And for price discrepancy, I need to create it. We undercharge the customer. There was some problem. So we need to create a debit now. We have to debit our customer. And we go back. Then we save it. See the message in the bottom? Debit memo has been saved. We take the debit memo. We make a note of it. And now, I could create VF01. Hit enter. And we have net value. And then we hit set. Debit memo L2. Created. If I go back, check the top flow. And this is the document. So the debit memo request completed. Debit memo done. Account is document created. If I go back to debit memo, if I see this document, so it's debit memo, document type L2. And uh, document type L2, which is the debit memo. Okay, so that's it. Thank you. Bye, guys. So we are done.